Stonebridge kids and preteens, we're glad you guys are worshiping with us today. Um, we're going to pray together and then we will step into worship and sing a couple songs. God, we're thankful uh, for the chance to be able to worship today. We're thankful that your spirit is with us wherever we are and that you have things that you want to say to each of us um, today as we worship and as we enter into your presence. So God, would you help us to say yes to you this morning would you help us to quiet our minds and our hearts and to focus in on you um, to think about who you are and the love that you have for us god and i pray that we would um, be able to show our love back to you through worship as we sing about your goodness and as we sing about um, just your power and and who you are god that you would reveal more of yourselves to us and that we would um, just be drawn into your presence and enjoy spending time with you this morning god we ask all of those things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can stand up and we will sing together. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. 
Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good. That was great. All right, I'm going to pass you off to Mr. Luke today. He has your lesson this uh, morning, and then I'll see you guys back here next week for worship. See you soon. Bye. Hey, guys. How you doing? It is uh, Luke here. Uh, I'm glad to be back with you guys this week. We got some exciting things to talk about, some exciting 
uh, messages. Um, so I hope you enjoyed worship. Um, and let's just dive right in. So last week, if you guys remember, I'll recap last week, we're talking about Jesus. Um, Jesus, uh, and the stories about his life, we call those the Gospels. And last week we talked about a story where Jesus was going to a well and he talked to this Samaritan woman. And at the time, that was pretty crazy because the Samaritan people and the Jewish people really did not get along. And so Jesus was doing something. He was stepping outside of the normal rules of society. He was uh, talking to this woman and he, you know, he shared uh, the truth about our living water, our salvation with her. And she shared it with other people. Um, and all these people were saved. And that was a pretty cool story because it showed us a, a couple different things about Jesus' character and about how we can live as Christians sharing our faith with other people. So now that we've caught up, I'd like to, we're going to talk about Jesus this week. We're going to talk about him a good bit, but I want to rewind hundreds of years, hundreds of years before Jesus was born. This comes uh, to us from the Old Testament. It was actually prophesied that Jesus would be born. And you guys might have heard about this before. We talked about this around Christmas time, but God promised David um, that Jesus would come to earth and he would uh, be our savior, he'd be our Messiah, and not just David, but he told Isaiah, he told all these different prophets, um, and uh, a, he told each one, you know, a couple different things about who Jesus would be and what he would do, but the important thing is that God had a plan for Jesus to come down and to save everybody on earth, which meant dying for our sins and living again. So I'm going to read you the scripture for this week. This comes to us from Jeremiah. Jeremiah is one of the prophets. So Isaiah is a prophet. Ezekiel is a prophet. Jeremiah is another one. Um, and so God spoke to Jeremiah and he made a promise uh, about Jesus. So I'm going to read it to you. This is Jeremiah 23 uh, verses 5 and 6. And the Lord's, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. So I want to just kind of break that down real quickly. There's a couple different um, key things. It talks about this. Um, he talks about Jesus coming from the family of David. And, and we see that's true. That as we follow the line of David down, David is the king um, around five, 600 uh, BC. And so Jesus directly is a descendant um, in his earthly family from David. He's a branch, meaning he's a part of that family tree. Um, and he will save Israel, he'll save Judah. That was the land of the Jewish people. He came down and he saved the people from those areas. Now, there's a specific word that's used in here that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but I don't want you to forget it. So that word is righteous. He calls, uh, he says his name will be the Lord. Uh, let me just make sure I'm saying it right. The Lord, our righteous savior. He calls it a righteous branch. Um, and so that's describing Jesus using a word you guys, you guys might not have heard before, righteous. So uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. But the first thing I want to emphasize um, is that this is something God has said to Jeremiah the prophet. And it comes true. Jesus, hundreds of years later, um, is born. He comes to earth, both fully God, fully human. He saves Israel. He saves Judah. He saves the rest of the world. He, he um, is a member of David's family tree. Those things that it says are true. And so how does that apply to our own lives? Well, the promises that God makes to us are also true. The promises that God makes to us, he'll also carry through on. So when we talk about having eternal life and being saved, being filled with living water, we can trust uh, that God will carry um, through on that promise, just like he did uh, with Jeremiah and some of the other prophets in the Old Testament. Um, more than just being saved, we know that we can find comfort and we can find um care in the Lord. And we know that he told us that in prayer, in worship, in reading his scripture, we can communicate and be in relationship with God. And so some of you guys have ever felt, have already felt this internal 
connection relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son. And then some of you are also still looking for that. And so for the kids, for you guys, kindergarten through fifth grade, that are, you know, still looking for a relationship with God, maybe you don't feel like you've heard him before. Maybe you feel like you don't understand why he's so important in our lives. Well, God has promised that he will be there. He will um, live in our lives, just like Jesus lived in the lives of the disciples and the people um, when he was alive. And so God promises that, and we know that's true. So if you're scared, if you don't understand why you don't feel like you have connected with God, know that he promised it, and so it will be coming. Because like we saw with Jeremiah, he keeps his promises. And that's pretty cool. So the next thing I want to talk about is this word righteous. So righteous, you may have never heard before. You might have heard somebody say, whoa, that's righteous. I mean, wow, that's really cool or that's good. But for our meaning of righteous, we mean doing things that are morally correct. And that's a lot of big words thrown at you. So morally means our morals, our values, um, the things that we do, making sure that they fall within our values. So y'all's values are probably set by your parents. Um, and we all probably have a very similar ones. Something like, they, they might be, don't lie to them. Don't uh, fight with your siblings. Um, don't bully kids at school. These are all values that our parents have probably set up as rules in our life. And so to follow those would be what I would call being righteous. Um, and the truth is, though those rules come from our parents... The reason we're righteous, where we find these morals, these values from, is actually from the Father, from God. We see it written out all in Scripture in the Bible, and we know that's the morals we need to live up to. So it's more than just following rules, but it's living up to the standard that God has put for us in the Bible on how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to interact with other people, um, and how we're supposed to respect those around us. So part of the problem with righteousness is we can think, okay, it's a good you know, idea, it's a good thing to talk about, but how can we exactly find out what it is to live righteously? And I think there's one main, maybe obvious way, and it's following Jesus. And so I don't just mean you know, knowing that Jesus loves us, I don't mean just knowing that um, we believe and have faith in Jesus, but I mean looking at how Jesus lived his life to understand how we should live our own. And that can be tough because Jesus was alive 2,000 years ago. You know, he's traveling to wells to fill up uh, buckets for himself and others. He's healing people with leprosy, a, di a disease that doesn't really exist in our lives anymore. We're not going to wells. We're not dealing with leprosy. So how can we live like Jesus did? Well... First off, we know that we're supposed to. To be Christian means to be like Christ. It means to follow Christ, so we know we're supposed to. So how do we use Jesus as a guide uh, for how we live, how we interact? Well, we look at what he did. We look at the stories that we've already heard about him. And, and we'll continue to talk about this, but just to give you guys a couple examples, we'll start with Jesus in the well. Jesus goes up and talks to this woman, uh, a Samaritan, and he's Jewish, and those people don't get along. Well, you guys at school, you guys have groups of friends, and then you have people that you know in your school who are not part of your group of friends. Maybe friends of yours don't like those people. Maybe you don't like those people. Well, if we're living righteously, if we're living according to the values that God has given us in the Bible, we should be embracing those people. And by embracing, I mean um, joining them into the group. We should be inviting them to be our friend, inviting them uh, to be a part of, of our group, uh, are part of our friend group, a part of our lives, a part of our church, all that type of stuff. That's one way you can live righteously, using Jesus as a guide. What else did Jesus do? Well, Jesus healed people, but when Jesus healed people, he prayed to the Lord that he would heal them. And so if we know somebody who's sick, if an adult in our life is sick, if a grandparent is sick, if a friend of ours is sick, praying for them to be healed that is something we can do to live righteously, right? So every story about Jesus, you can find another uh, 
input, you can find another way to live righteously. Every story, I, I would say that every single story about Jesus has him living righteously. He's a perfect person. He's, a, he's fully God, he's fully man, but he's a perfect person. When he was on earth, he was a perfect person. I can't emphasize that enough. So if you guys are wondering, how do I live righteously? How do my parents know what it means to live righteously? Well, they know because of scripture, what scripture has told them. So I think that's good for today. I know that this word righteous and what it means can be kind of confusing, especially when we're learning new words. So I hope this was helpful, maybe gave you some handholds to hold on to. Um, but just to reiterate, Jesus is our guide. Jesus is our teacher. And just like a teacher shows you how to do a math problem, Jesus shows us how to live our lives, how to work through our own problems. And so when you're wondering, how do I live righteously? Or what do I need to do? Or what should my values be? For the rest of your life, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the books of the gospel, to know how should I live my life, how can I be righteous. So I'll pray and then we'll s I'll send you out, guys, for the week. God, I just want to say thank you that you gave us the perfect example of what it means to live righteously. You gave us Jesus Christ, our Lord, our righteous Lord, to show us and to guide us and to teach us how to live righteously, how to live up to the standard that the Bible has set, God. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you. Amen. All right, guys. Well, it's been great talking to you. Uh, hope to see you soon. See y'all later.